Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm finally done with the semester at the university and can get around to making videos on YouTube again. Now, thanks for all of you that have been waiting for my new videos. Now, early in May, the US FDA approved the first respiratory syncytial virus or RSV vaccine for use in people 60 and older in the US. Now, since more than half of my regular viewers are in this age group, I figure it may be a good idea to cover this topic, which could be helpful when you consider maybe getting one more vaccine this fall. Now, so let's find out what RSV is and what is so special about this virus is that take has taken more than 50 years to develop a vaccine for it. Let's begin the talk by first understanding the biology of the respiratory syncytial virus. Respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is a single-stranded RNA virus. RSV primarily infects the respiratory tract, causing respiratory illnesses ranging from mild cold-like symptoms to severe lower respiratory tract infections such as bronchitis and pneumonia, especially in infants, young children, and the elderly. The virus is enveloped and spherical in shape. The virus has two surface proteins, the F fusion protein and the G attachment protein that enable it to attach to and enter host cells. The F protein is responsible for the fusion of the viral envelope with the host cell membrane, allowing the virus to enter the cell. The G protein mediates the attachment of the virus to host cells and plays a role in host immune evasion. Once inside the host cell, the viral RNA is replicated and transcribed, producing viral proteins and genomic RNA. The newly produced viral proteins assemble with genomic RNA to form new variants, which are released from the infected cell and spread to other cells in the respiratory tract. The immune response to RSV infection involves both innate and adaptive immune mechanisms. The fusion F protein and the attachment G protein are the primary targets for the host's immune response. However, RSV is known to undergo antigenic variation in both the F and G proteins, allowing RSV to evade recognition by the host's immune system and cause repeated infections throughout life. Now let's look at the impact of the RSV virus. RSV can cause severe respiratory infections in young children, the elderly, adults with chronic heart or lung diseases, and people with weakened immune systems. Each year, it is estimated that between 60 to 160,000 older adults in the United States are hospitalized, and between 6,000 to 10,000 die due to RSV infection. An older study in 2005 looked at how RSV impacted healthy elderly patients and high-risk adults. RSV infection develops annually in 3 to 7 percent of healthy elderly patients and 4 to 10 percent of high-risk adults. Among healthy elderly patients, RSV infection caused fewer office visits than influenza. However, RSV caused a similar rate of hospitalization in both groups. Of all the hospitalized cases, RSV infection and influenza A resulted in a similar length of stay, rates of use of intensive care unit, and mortality rate. Now note that the study population had a relatively high seasonal flu vaccination rate. The first global study published in 2014 also confirmed the similar prevalence of RSV in adults over 65. Overall, the risk of severe RSV infection is higher in elderly patients with underlying medical conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and chronic lung disease. 
Now let's look at the rough history of RSV vaccine development. The first attempt to develop an RSV vaccine began in the 1950s and 1960s. Initial efforts focused on inactivated virus vaccines, but clinical trials of these vaccines showed that they actually increased the risk of severe disease upon natural infection with RSV. In the 1970s, researchers began developing live attenuated RSV vaccines, which were designed to be less virulent than wild-type viruses. However, clinical trials of these vaccines also showed that they could cause severe disease, particularly in young infants. The reasons why RSV vaccine candidates, particularly the inactivated virus vaccines, caused more severe disease in young children are not fully understood. But the most prominent hypothesis was that the inactivated virus vaccine may not have generated an immune response that was sufficient to protect against RSV infection, but instead may have enhanced the disease caused by the natural RSV infection. This phenomenon is called vaccine-induced enhanced disease, or VAED. Specifically, vaccine-associated hypersensitivity was the more possible cause, and it has been observed with other viruses such as the dengue virus and measles virus. Simply put, the vaccine candidate induced too few virus-blocking antibodies, and simultaneously caused an overreactive inflammatory response. In the 1980s and 1990s, researchers developed subunit vaccines that contained purified RSV proteins, including the F and G proteins. These vaccines were thought to be safer than live attenuated vaccines, but clinical trials showed that they were not very effective at preventing RSV infection. The protein subunit used in these vaccine candidates was folded in the post-fusion form. As a result, antibodies that targeted the post-fusion form were ineffective because at that time the virus would have already fused and infected the cell. Now let's look at the process of leading to a successful RSV vaccine in the last two decades. The newly approved RSV vaccine, known as Araxv, is a recombinant protein vaccine marketed by a drug company called GSK. But the groundwork was laid by a structural biologist, Dr. Jason McLellan, who began solving the F protein structure in 2013 as a postdoctoral researcher at the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease in Bethesda, Maryland. The fusion protein exists in the pre-fusion form and the post-fusion form. Past experience tells us that targeting the protein's post-fusion form was ineffective as a vaccine candidate, but it was not possible to find a way to stabilize it in its pre-fusion form, a shape it adopts when it's ready to grab onto cell for a very long time. The breakthrough in the RSV vaccine happened around 2015, when McLennan's team found a way to fix the F protein in its pre-fusion form. But the group added an important chemical bond that acted like a double-sided tape to keep the protein in the pre-fusion shape, exposing its vulnerabilities to the adaptive immune system for generating high levels of neutralizing antibodies. The stabilized pre-fusion F protein is then expressed with recombinant DNA technologies to mass-produce the protein used in the vaccine, particularly the one from GSK. Now, in other words, this is more of a traditional vaccine technology that has been used in many other vaccines, such as hepatitis B and some influenza vaccines. So how good is the GSK RSV subunit vaccine? Now let's look at their published phase three clinical trial data 
in the New England Journal of Medicine. In an ongoing placebo-controlled clinical trial across 17 countries, over 25,000 adults 60 and up were randomized to receive either the placebo or a single dose of the RSV prefusion protein vaccine. During an average follow-up of 6.7 months, the vaccine showed a greater than 80% relative efficacy in preventing RSV confirmed a lower respiratory tract disease. The most commonly reported side effects were pain at the injection site and fatigue. They were more common in the vaccine group than in the placebo group. However, the authors noted that the trial scale was insufficient to detect rare side effects. Now to wrap up this RSV 101 lecture, let's find out the product details of the newly approved GSK RSV vaccine. This vaccine contains the prefusion F protein. Now, this protein was cloned into genetically engineered Chinese hamster ovary cells and grown in a media containing no antibiotics or animal-derived proteins. The protein was then purified, extracted, and packaged into the vaccine. Besides the prefusion F protein, the vaccine also contains two adjuvants. According to the prescribing information on the FDA website, the first adjuvant is an ultra-surface molecule found in the bacteria Salmonella called 3O dexacyl 4 monophosphorylipid A. Now, the second adjuvant is a saponin purified from a plant. The two components are formulated in a liposome. The general idea of all vaccine adjuvants is to stimulate the innate immune system response, increase inflammation, and retain the vaccine antigen at the site of injection for a longer time. In addition, these effects can further increase the adaptive immune response to generate antigen-specific antibodies and cytotoxic T cells. And lastly, the vaccine contains no preservatives. So I hope this video has provided enough background on the RSV and the RSV vaccine. Now, the CDC is expected to discuss the recommendation for this vaccine in their June meeting coming up. Now, the chances of recommending this vaccine for people 60 and above are quite high. And I hope this video will serve you well when you need to know more before considering the RSV vaccine this fall. Now, this video also has a lot of background materials, such as terms like adjuvants, antigenic variation, and recombinant DNA technologies. Now, if you want to learn more about these specific topics, check out my videos on my Pharmacy Classroom Pro channel. I will have the specific links to the video in the description box below. Now, that is all for this week. Thank you very much again for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Please take care. Bye.